welcome to What Am I Rolling, a twice-monthly RPG one-shot podcast, hosted by me, Fiona. This week, I'm joined by my sister, Alex, for Goat Crashers, a one-page role-playing game created by game designer Grant Howitt, whose one-page one-shots we featured on What Am I Rolling before. The premise behind Goat Crashers is very simple. You are a cheeky little goat. And all you want to do is party. Problem is, the only party is being held by humans who don't want goats to ruin it. But to hell with them, you're going to get inside by any means necessary and have the best time. Goat Crashers is available as a pay-what-you-want-for product on the Rowan, Rook and Decard website. That's rowanrookanddecard.com. You can find out more information about Grant's other projects and one-shots on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash G-S Howitt. And Howitt is spelled H-O-W-I-T-T. I'll add links to Grant's Patreon on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode's show notes. As Goat Crashes breaks up quite nicely into distinct sections, I'll go into a quick overview for each section before each part of the one-shot. One last thing before we begin, naturally there are times in this one shot where the players, and myself, mostly myself, get the rules wrong or forget something plot wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day we all make mistakes and what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. So let's start with creating goats. To create a goat, the player must roll a six-sided die, or a d6, to see what kind of goat they are and what special skill they have. There are six goat types in total. Pick me, with a skill in smallness. Fancy, with a skill in charming. Mountain, with a skill in climbing. Bighorned, with a skill in fighting. Satanic, with a skill in occultism. And fainting, with a skill in... well, fainting. Once the player has their goat type, they roll another 2d6, one to determine what their favourite goat thing to do is, and another to determine what their goat wants to do at the party, and make a note of the results. So first of all, I'm going to get you to roll what type of goat you are, so that's a 1d6 for me, please. And tell me what you get. Three. Three. So you are a mountain goat. Best kind. And your special ability is climbing, which makes sense for a mountain goat. Cool. All right. So next up, we're gonna see what your favorite goat thing to do is. Okay. One uh, d six as well. So what did you get? Four. Four. Making a mockery of physical barriers, <laughs> which I guess kind of works as a mountain goat because you're climbing over things. So you're like, <laughs> fuck, fuck this <laughs> fence. <laughs> Making a what was it? Mockery. Making a mockery of physical barriers. Is that physical barriers in terms of fences or in terms of people? <laughs> Is however you define physical barriers, I guess. Okay, and the final thing I need you to do is roll a 1d10 to say what do you want to do at the party. Six. Six. You want to be interviewed by Tatler of the Society Pages. <laughs> What's the name of your goat? Hmm. You could think of a backstory just now. Why do you like partying so hard? Why do you want to get interviewed by Tatler? All that sort of thing. My name is Marvin. Marvin. Marv, for short. Marv. The mountain the goat. goat. <laughs> <laughs> a and, classic. And the reason I like to party so hard is because I'm one cool dude. Absolutely. Describe, so the mountain goats, what do they look like? Do we know? They look goaty. Very good. But on the side of a mountain. <laughs> you never see them off a mountain. <laughs> they're kind of a bit lopsided as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they... they're con- well, you're constantly on a mountain. Yeah. So one set of your legs are shorter than the other, is that what you're saying? Well, but I feel like it's going to be really impractical. Yeah, well, especially if you're climbing and getting over barriers. Well, but I, I have, like, a, a heeled shoe on my shorter side. Oh, okay. So you actually can't tell from a distance, unless yeah. you're close up. It's like, you know when you get, like, the shoes, if, you, if you've got one leg shorter than the other, and they give you, like, the, the chunky shoe? That's what I got on one side. Excellent. When a goat performs a risky action, the player rolls 2d6. They add another 2d6 if their goat type skill ties in with the action. They add another 2d6 if they're doing their favourite goat thing. 
each dice that shows a 4, 5 or 6 is a success. This is opposed by the Chaos Pool, which I'll talk about in a moment. Each object the player encounters will have a difficulty. Each success they roll reduces that difficulty by 1, and when it's 0, the obstacle is no longer a problem. If a player ends up with only one success, they are in a very tight spot. If a player has no successes, they are in trouble, and the GM must describe how things have gone really, really badly. So, the chaos pool. When a goat does something loud or disruptive, the GM can add a dice or two to the chaos pool to reflect the partygoers getting more suspicious about the encroaching goats. When the goat does an action, the GM will roll the chaos pool and subtract their number of successes, so four, five, or six, away from the goat's successes. When the goats do something sneaky, the GM can take a dice out of the chaos pool. Once per session, a goat can party hard and access the power of chaos. When a player does this, they grab all the dice in the chaos pool and add them to their now unopposed pool. They then roll them and apply the number of successes to the current obstacle. So, with all that out of the way, let's play Goat Crashers. So, you've heard about this party uh, somewhere up on, uh, I guess, where do you live? You live on the mountain, right? I live on Goat Mountain. Goat Mountain. Goats aren't very clever with um, how, (laughs) how they name things. Absolutely. They've got limited imagination in terms of naming things, in terms of partying, Cowabunga dude. Exactly. And along the grapevine or the, the field grind, I don't know. You've heard... Mountain vine. Mountain vine. (laughs) You've heard that down in the village at the base of this mountain is the biggest party you've ever heard of. And you've not partied a lot in your time, but you there's something about it, the music, the, the people, the thing, it gets in your goat blood. And you really have to be at this party because you know for a fact that a journalist from Tatler has come to this mountain village unannounced and is doing a big piece on the people there. I mean, it's the first biggest magazine like that we read as goats... The second, well, the you second really biggest. Read it. Ma- I think you eat it. <laughs> well, the second biggest magazine mm-hmm. is Goat Weekly. Goat Weekly, yeah. um, of course. That would be nice, but the dream is Tatler. Absolutely. So I want to ask you, what are your preparations as you're going to this party? So you've heard about it, and no one else seems interested. Actually, out of your whole herd, you, Marv, you're the one. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's why you called yourself. You're the one who's always loved a good party. So you're on your own for this one. So what do you do? I'm going to shine my horns. Mm-hmm. Okay. And brush my coat. Mm-hmm. And check that my legs aren't too lopsided. Because uh, you're a mountain goat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's easily enough. I mean, you you scrub up quite well for a goat. Yeah. But is there anything you're aware that they have a sneaky suspicion that this place might be... There might be a lot of security and there might be a dress code and whatnot. So I'm going to wear a little bow tie. How are you going to get the bow tie? I am going to go to uh, the Goat Outfitters. Right. Down at the base of the village. Yeah. Okay. And buy myself a little goat tie. You don't have any money, you're a goat. I'm going to steal myself a little goat tie. That sounds excellent. (laughs) And uh, a little goat top hat. Okay, so so two things you want to get before the beginning of the party. Do you want to get any drinks? Do you want to bring a gift at all? You're not really sure who the party host is or... Is it BYOB? Um, you don't know. You've only heard about this on the on the mountain vine. Um, I guess. I mean, it is a bit awkward if you turn up to a party without a gift. Definitely. So, uh, you know, social etiquette dictates that I must bring a bottle of something. Okay, so let's write this down. Things you have to do. So the first one is get a bow tie. Yeah. Second, you said get a fancy hat. Yeah. Oh, maybe a monocle. Maybe that's too fancy. Oh, whoa, whoa. What would Marv do? I feel like Marv is a monocle man. Monocle. So, so it's get monocle as well. Third thing. And this is in the lead up. You've got literally you've heard about this at the last minutes. So you're piecing together things as you go. So you've got uh, get a bow tie, get a fancy hat, get a monocle, and then get a drink. Well, yeah, a bottle of something. Bottle of something. Fire whiskey. Bottle of fire whiskey. It is the finest in the land. So, is there anything else you'd like to do? Uh, is there anything else I should do? I mean, what would you normally do if you were going to a party? Well, I planned my outfit. You have, yeah. I'd have made myself look on point. Mm-hmm. 
You could go and get like a, a makeover or something like that, or try and find something that could make you less conspicuous or, or make you stand out more. You don't really know. No, I think... I think well, actually, because it's Tatler, isn't it? So you might want to be stand out from the crowd. Well, that's one that... Hence the monocle. Hence the monocle, my bad, yeah. Um, a cape. Sounds good. Yeah. So, you've made it down to the bottom of the mountain and you've trundled in to the village. Uh, it seems quite quiet now. You think they're getting ready for tonight's party. You've got a couple of hours before things start going off. What would you like to do first? Perhaps sort out my outfit. Sort out the outfit. So you're getting a bow tie... Fancy hat, monocle, and cape for getting the drinks. That makes sense. Conveniently, there is a shop, and it is the only shop miles around which sells costumes. And whilst you're thinking, oh, I wish there was a tailor's, or I wish there was a some sort of a outfit rental shop, you think costume might be the best to go with so far. It's currently open for business, and as you sort of peek in at the window, again trying to blend in with the other sort of farm animals that are dotted around this village... It's quite dusty inside, and it looks like at the counter there is a very old woman with huge glasses, and she's just looking at her book, going back and forth. Not just any book, you see, it is Tatler. Oh. Mm. Mm. What would you like to do? Would you like to try and sneak in? Would you like to round the back or see if there's another entrance, or would you want to try and blag it? Let's blag it. Blag it. All right. You open the door, there's a little ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and what I will say as well, you can attempt to speak, <laughs> but can I not? You're a goat. <laughs> then why am I being interviewed by Tatler? You want to be interviewed <laughs> by Tatler. Tatler doesn't necessarily want to interview you. So the bell goes. Ding, ding, the lady looks up and is peering towards you. What would you like to do? You could have definitely told me that my ability to speak is... I wanted to see what you were going to do. That <laughs> <laughs> was my ability to write. How's your ability to write? Yeah. Let's say impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And this whole shop as well, it is crammed full of railings of costumes. And you can see like a fairy's outfit. You can see the back end of a pantomime cow. And just all sorts of things, like shelves upon shelves upon shelves of different things. I'm going to sneak into one of the aisles. You're going to sneak into one of the aisles? Sneak, okay. Sneaky. Cool. Uh, roll 2d6 for me then. Uh, this is quite a low uh, roll. There's nothing in the, in the chaos pool just now. So I would say you uh, need at least two. One success. Okay, well, you still got a two, uh, so that's not a success. You try to sneak into one of the aisles. The problem is, trying to sneak in between the railings, they're so packed full together, you can't make any headway, and you're sort of like, meh, meh, you're very <laughs> quietly trying to get through. And then you hear, hello? Hello? Uh, do you require assistance? And this old lady sort of teeters off her really tall thing and is trying to come towards you. Again, not probably, hasn't recognised that you're a goat yet. Grab the nearest costume. You're going to <laughs> put it on. I'm going to grab the nearest costume. <laughs> Roll 2d6 for me. You need one success in order to get past this. Two and a one. Oh, I see. Yeah. So no, still no success. It's going to be four, five or six. I feel like an online, the dice thing, it's, it's cheating. Cheating. I don't think it's cheating at all. So you go and try and put a costume on, but unfortunately you then try to get it off because it's so wedged in. It pulls the whole thing <laughs> over. So I'm going to add another dice to the chaos pool. There's two dice currently. She's like, eh, uh, excuse me, I, I, stop, I'll come and help. And she's sort of getting quicker and quicker closer to you. You've got one <laughs> final chance to try and make this okay before, before she's going to discover something's amiss. What would you like to do? I can't talk to her, can I? You can try. Okay, shall I try and be like, oh, I'm fine. I'm just a bit clumsy. Are you going to do anything with your... You've got your goat skill. Oh, so. maybe I could climb over. I'm going to climb over. Yeah. I'm going to climb over the racks yep. <laughs> to the next aisle. <laughs> there we go. So that's 4d6 you can roll. Okay. And I'm going to roll 2d6 because... Um, so should I roll them separately, do you Roll think? them separately and tell me what you get. Six. So that's one success. Three. Not a success. Two. Not a success. Three. Not a success. You've got one success. And I'm going to roll the two chaos ones as well. One's a six, and a two, so it cancels out. So you, you do, I will say, you do get over the gate, but again, you sort of kick off, and it suddenly starts a whole domino effect. <laughs> and you see this old lady go, Hey! What's going on? Ah! Have I killed her? <laughs> no, you, you haven't killed her, but her legs are sort of sticking up out of the thing. Oh, well, she's, she's like, in- ah! incapacitated. She is. 
But you're causing a lot of chaos, then. Quick, grab the items I need! Uh, you can't see which items you have. You can see, like, bits of costumes, but you can't see... You're looking for maybe a cape. You sort of look around, there's all sorts of capes. There's, like, capes with stars on, there's capes, mm. you know, uh, there's, a, uh, like, a Zorro-type cape. Yeah, but you're like, ah! And Pick then, the cape with stars! Cape, cape with stars, easy. You sort of pull it, you go, Arr! pull it. I need you to make me a uh, 2d6, because you're going to pull, again, on the, one of these racks... <laughs> And I'm going to roll 3d6 to get past... Four. Four. Success. Two. Failure. So you got one success. Yes, because you got one success. I rolled all three dice and I didn't get any successes, so you win. You pull it off and it comes across. And you're covered in it. You're like, meh, meh, meh. But you shook it off and it sort of nicely comes across your back and ties magically. 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 <laughs> so you have a cape. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> you look fabulous. <laughs> Um, where's the Marv. old woman at this point? The w- woman, she's still stuck in the chaos that you've left, uh, the, the various different pieces. She's slowly trying to make her way out. Okay, out. quick, look for a hat. Look for a hat. Um, you can't see like a top hat or anything like that, but on a few of the... There's even some dummies off the side. There's a beautiful... Um, oh, what do they call it? There's like a French beret. There is like a backwards baseball cap. There's a cowboy hat. And then there is one of those hats with the two empty beer... Um, holders on each side with straws going under. Those are the things you can see. You can't see anything more fashionable than well, that. I want a top hat. Can't see it. Uh, this is well, yeah, well, you might need to go deeper into the shop. Okay, to find what about like Monocle? Monocle, you have a look around and you think, ooh, well, she did have glasses on. I'm not going to steal the woman's glasses. That's well risky. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're panicking at this point. You're like, shit, 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 shit. Go deeper into the shop. Going deeper into the shop. So you sort of. Um, oh, I forgot about my bow tie. That'll be somewhere. I'll be somewhere. Uh, you probably have to climb over some uh, more racks if you okay, want to. Okay, let's get some climbing. All right, so that's 4d6 uh, for me. Now I'm going to roll 3d6 against you. So I'm, I'm rolling 4d6. 4d6. Tell me what you get individually. Six. A success. One. Not a success. Six. Uh, two successes. Four. Three successes. Okay, I have to roll three dice. So first one's a four. Back to two. Successes for you. Cancelling out. Uh, three. Does not succeed. And a five. Well, still one success. Yes! There you go. <laughs> so yeah, meh, meh. And as you're jumping from one to another, a couple of them start to wobble slightly. It's almost like a bit of Crash Bandicoot, <laughs> where you're sort of like jumping from pillar to pillar, but you manage to make it uh, You make it to the back of the shop, and what you see right at the back, behind the desk, is a glass case. And in the case is like a, the top half of a dummy. And on it, you see a beautiful bowler hat, and almost like a golden pair of what they call like a Groucho Marx type thing. So you've got the glasses, fake nose, and huge moustache. That'll do. <laughs> That's me. It is in a glass case. Are there any keys nearby? Is there a handle? It doesn't seem to be a handle, but there is like a lock on it. Again, you hear from like, eh, hello? hello? I do say, don't go back there. Don't go back there. And again, you sort of hear sort of scruffling and like, lady, eh, eh, trying to get out of the, the chaos. Is there a key? Uh, not that you can see just now, no. I think we're going to have to kick in the glass <laughs> case. <laughs> there is no other way to do that. There is no other way to do that. Um, but what I say, I'm just trying to make sure that you justify why you're doing it so you get more dice, right? So I think it would help later on with with like protecting my goat identity. Sure, but also help you with the interview for Tatler. Well, exactly. Yeah, so now you get 4d6 because you want to complete your aim of being a gym. Exactly, yeah. I was making sure that you sort of justify, you know, so you make the most no, of all it's all, There's lots of reasons. <laughs> there's lots of reasons. All right, 46 for me, please. Three. Not a success. Two. Uh, not a success. Five. Success. Six. Six, two successes. Okay. I'm rolling three. First one's a three. One. And one. Three successes. Yes! <laughs> and I'll say with that as well, what you probably do, the power of your dream being so close at this this is what I need to complete my outfit. You don't kick. If anything, you go, you build yourself up and you go, eh, and you sort of like, almost like shift the lock and it just falls beautifully apart. Like, almost like tinkling of glass. Skilled. Exactly. And the door swings open. So now you have a top hat, uh, a bowler hat, sorry, and a Groucho Marx type <laughs> mask to the thing. And I'll say as well, there is a lovely little a bow tie made of sort of almost blue emeralds on it as well. Okay, take that too. Yeah. Uh, you look a completely different goat. I'm going to get out. <laughs> get out of here. As you're back here, you, you do notice there seems to be like a back room as well. Hmm. 
Is there a way out through the back? Uh, you don't know. Shall I go in? Let's go in. All right. If you thought the last room was just full of organised chaos, this one is just a nightmare. There are boxes, there are cardboard uh, piles, there are like broken dummies, and there's all sorts of weird things in here. And at the back of this room, you see a very small uh, window, which you think is just the right size for a goat. And there seems to be piles of boxes that could almost be like a staircase up to Climb it. to the window! Very good. That's 2d6 for me, please. Uh, 4d6 for me, please. And because you did so well on that last task and got rid of one dice from the uh, chaos pool. One. Not success. Four. Success. Five. Success. Six. Success. <laughs> All right. Four. Three. Five. So still one success. <laughs> so you manage to... It's like... Meh, 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 jumping from box to box to box. And again, things start pouring over, colliding. Oh. Supply, and the lady says... Dad! She starts screaming random sort of but messages. But I won in the successness. You did. But because it's only one success, it's still something bad things happen because you're in a tight spot. But you manage to make it to the top and you squeeze yourself up as almost like Winnie the Pooh in the tree. It's like kick, 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 kick. <laughs> you <laughs> pop out and you come out into sort of the back alley behind the costume shop. A little bit dishevelled, but you sort of shake yourself off and there you are. A completely different goat to the person who went in. Oh, quick. Walk away. Walk away. <laughs> How are you walking away? Uh, casually. <laughs> 2d6 for me, please. I'm going to roll 2d6 against you. Five. Success. One. Okay. Four. And a three. We cancel that. I mean, you think it looks casual. Kind of... <laughs> it definitely doesn't look like a goat in a long, starry cape, <laughs> bowler hat, and a ground to a mouse. And my little... And my your little beautiful bow tie. tie. So you got your bow tie, you got your fancy hat... You've got your monocle slash Groucho mask. Well, that probably works out better. It probably does, actually, when you think about it. And your nice starry cape. So the only thing you've got left to get is a bottle of Fireball whiskey. Let's go get me some booze. Go get you some booze. So, with this village, I lied before, it's not just one shop, the costume shop. There's also the um, the local supermarket. I don't know what a mountain <laughs> supermarket would be called. Um, I'm sure one can come to us very quickly. Uh... Sane's little. Sane's... <laughs> what country are we in? I don't um, know. It's a mixture of England and Germany, apparently. Clearly. Uh, no, I'm just going to think. I think we should call it... Do tell. <laughs> Get up brain today. I think we should call it... Basket Town. Cool. <laughs> no, um, we should call it... It has to be a goat pun, right? Yeah. Um, the kid shoppy? Oh, I like that. A kid something. Kiddle? Kiddle. Sounds like little. I like that. <laughs> Let's go with Kiddle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you go to Kiddle. Um, the logo is obviously <laughs> of a goat. Like, out, looking out of the shop basket. Actually, no. What? There's, um, there's a supermarket. Was it called Netto? Has a picture of a dog on it. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That's how I imagine um, Kiddle. Kiddle. It's a, it's a little goat on it. Now it's sort of mid morning, and you've you know, made chaos at the shops. The Kiddle um, <coughs> seems quite busy, and there's lots of people in there, probably getting last minute preparations. And you realise probably a good thing that you are bringing a gift because everyone there is getting stuff to go home, make something, and then bring it to this party. Now it is incredibly busy. You are already made up for your party. So you have some sort of, um, maybe disguise, I guess, to get in through the main doors or the automatic doors, if you wish. But again, you know there's maybe an, a back entrance. You've seen from your high vantage point on the mountain these weird things, these sort of metal uh, wagons sort of come and then load off things uh, around the back. Let's go with the subtle approach this time. Sounds good. I'll take a dice out of the pool. It's got one dice in the chaos pool. Right. What would you like to do? Let's go around the back to the delivery entrance. Mm-hmm. And sneak in. Sneak in. So when you get back there, it seems <coughs> very quiet. There doesn't seem to be anyone in the deliveries just now. It's like some opened uh, metal wagons, and you can hear noise from inside this um, big sort of warehouse, and it looks like it's a weird sort of material where it's sort of like a curtain, but cut into flaps, and you, you are not sure what it is at all. Weird. But you, you start sniffing, and you can smell fresh uh, salads and stuff. I don't know. 
I'm sure salad smell. Um, fresh <laughs> fruit and fresh veg. Uh, fruit thing, and you suspect that this would be the way in. Okay, so I'm going to like delicately, mm-hmm. uh, casually mm-hmm. go through a little bit of the flappy things. Yeah, and have a look around. <laughs> okay, so you look in. <clears throat> It's quite a sight. I appreciate it. again, bowler hat, <laughs> <laughs> Groucho Mars mask, and a cape and a fancy tie. So you look in. Thankfully, uh, when you look in, the people that are on this are very busy trying to get the the loads done. And you see people unpacking boxes, uh, shifting things out, and putting it onto like a huge sort of conveyor, which uh, you can sense goes into the supermarket. Very right, bizarre. You've never seen this sort of thing happen before, but you suspect this must be very unique. The unique selling point of Lid- uh, Kiddle. <laughs> oh, I said Lidl. That's not good. <laughs> and I think as well, because you, even though you're, you know, mountain goats are quite big, you're quite short, and so no one's sort of looking down <clears> at you <throat> just now. And you can see as well, there's another set of doors leading in, and you, someone comes in and out, and you can see it leads on to what you su- assume is the shop floor. So either I can go through the doors, mm-hmm. or I can go through the conveyor belt. Correct. So I could hide behind the conveyor belt. And what you can <clears> see is what, well, yeah, so you could hide behind. And what you can see, actually, when people are, um, when, they're, when I say they're unpacking, they're unpacking huge big crates, but inside are still quite big boxes and they're being put on this conveyor belt okay. and shifting it through. Get into a box. Okay. With holes conveniently placed for my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> okay. On on the conveyor belt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> You should wait there for ages. <laughs> so you're going to try... Well, because I think the other way is too risky of people coming in and so out. You're gonna try, so you're going to try and sneak past and onto the conveyor belt and in, into a box. Yes. All right, roll... Is two climbing involved? Is it? Onto a conveyor belt. Definitely. Okay. You get, all right, 46 on that then. Do a persuasion check. <laughs> Three. No. Two. No. One. No. Six. Yeah, okay, one success. I've got one dice. Let's see if I can cancel that out. One. Oh! <laughs> You're very used to this now. You leap and you, it's beautiful in there. There's like a, a moment where <laughs> a moment where the worker puts the thing there, turns around, and literally you jump past them into the box. It's beautiful. And you go, <laughs> it's like Mission Impossible. And the, the, the couple of things shut on top of you. And you've landed in a box full of like well, fire whiskey <laughs> it definitely been broken <laughs> but it's it, it's very so, it's what you've landed in it stinks of like crisps you, what seems to have happened is that you've opened you know when you jumped in your hooves sort of burst the bags in there and you're just covered in like quavers as if you're packed in a layer. and you can see out of it convenient eye holes obviously convenient <laughs> You know what? I really like. I'll do it because you because he's only one success. I like the idea of your capes trailing out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you're looking up, and as this uh, conveyor box goes through, what happens is it goes up like this conveyor and comes out of the top. And actually, as you look, it's almost like a Monsters Inc. type thing where you see a whole like above the shop floor, a whole sort of range of pathways and uh, what other word is it like? This is just conveyor belt. It's just different ways yeah. that it goes. Sort of goes around. Then it goes into different, different parts routes. of it. Different <clears throat> routes. And you go, oh shit! <laughs> As you see it, sort of crest to the top, <laughs> and it slowly goes down. Wee! Um, wee! <clears throat> but of course, with your cape out the back, it starts to attract a lot of attention because you're like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of go back and forth to it. And as you go past, you know, some people, there's a small child pointing. As you go past her, mama, mama. <laughs> and as you sort of pass, you see an aisle and it just says alcohol. Oh, jump out. Jump out. Well. Are we, is that what you're doing? No, because that will give me a chaos dice. Maybe. Depends how badly you, <laughs> you roll. It's loud or disruptive? I mean, I don't think it's loud. I could delicately jump out of the you box. Bet. But because you're, you're such a height, and you are going at speed now, it will take you... You need to do it like an action to get out, I'd say. And you are quite high up, so you're going to have to somehow get down. Could I leap onto the top of the aisles? Mm-hmm. The physical barriers, one could say. Yes. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> yes. Leap on top. Well, let's just do it one wanna, at a time. Yeah, one at a time. So you want to leap on top, <clears throat> all right? Yeah. Um, so because you're using your... Well, your... Just your favourite goat thing to do. Yeah. Is make a mockery of physical barriers. 
<laughs> so that's 46. What? 46. I thought you four said 46. I thought you said 46. No, that's not 46. Six. Success. Six. Success. Six. Success. <laughs> Six. Seriously, four sixes. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going to have to roll. It is, it is loud what you're doing. So it's two, six. Six and four. So you get two successes though. So incredibly... <laughs> It must be the cape that does it. No, it's magical cape. It's almost like you're Batman, in a way. You sort of go, yeah, I am the knight. <laughs> and you land on top of very precarious, not even the aisle bit of thing, but a huge mountain of stacked bottles. And you're at the top. And you're like, I am home. This is, this is my place. <laughs> and you can see other sort of like built up mountain ranges of alcohols. And then right at the end, you see it. There is a, a clearing when it says fireball whiskey. But there's only, it looks like there's only one bottle left. Leap there <laughs> relatively quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> across the other mountains. So through climbing, you're trying to climb different mountains. Okay. Yeah. And also I'm making a mockery of the physical barriers. You are. So technically that's 66 you're doing. So you've got to roll 66. Yeah. You, I'm going to say you need to get two successes on this. Two. Two. Three. Three. Oh no. Four. Success. Four. Success. Four. Excellent. Okay. And then I've got to roll two. Oh, two and a one. So, again, beautiful. It's almost like you start humming your own theme music. (laughs) And as you get there, you will land. No one else seems to have spotted you. And you go to get the last one. And just as you get there, a hand comes in to grab the fire whiskey. (laughs) And it looks like an old man... You sort of take it, and you you probably grab it at the same time with your with your mouth, and you what? I, this is mine. I got here first. I'm gonna have to talk to him. What are you gonna say? No, you didn't. <laughs> what, what do you mean? I I was here first. Look, kind sir, like I'm. This is this is my it's my privilege to go to the this meeting. I need I need this fireball whiskey. Dear sir. Yes. <laughs> my ailing mother. <laughs> is ailing and she is in the last few days of her life and her dying wish is to have a bottle of fireball whiskey would you deny a dying woman her last wish 2d6 for me i'm gonna roll 2d6 against you i've got to be honest you need two successes for this two (laughs) nope one. Six. Two sixes. Wait a minute. <laughs> what is this? Is, is that a, a fake moustache? How dare you accuse me of having fake facial Come hair? Here and go no, your face. Um, kick him and take the whiskey <laughs> and then jump back up onto the fucking alcohol mountains. Okay, so that's going to be another <laughs> chaos because you're being... Very loud. <laughs> uh, you're going to kick him. Um, so you're going to kick him first. So just do 2d6. T- t- it won't be that hard to hit him, I've got to be honest. Six. Success. Four. Success. Two, six, six. So you just go, no! Bah, bah! And you sort of hit him. And he sort of go- rolls back slightly. Um, <clears throat> if you're climbing up, you, you can grab the bottle of whiskey and you're going to climb up. Yep. Um, roll 4d6 four. for me, please. Three. Uh, not a success. Six. Success. Five. Success. Six. Success? Wow. Okay. And then one, four, four. So one success. So you do manage to get over the um, the get, alcohol mountain. Yeah, I'm but as you do so, your your foot sort of slips slightly and slowly but surely, <laughs> it's almost like, it's like at the top. It's really, really bizarre. You've got the miniatures at the top and then the bigger bottles further down. So the miniatures start falling and then the bottles oh, start falling. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing cascades down. It's another domino effect, and you just hear like uh, like children going, "Mama, no!" <laughs> and, and everyone's running, screaming out of Kiddle, and you, but you make it back onto the uh, uh, conveyor belt with your fireball whiskey, <laughs> your, your face, and it is fucking chaos all in this shop. There's like announcers going. Um, you know, trying to, it's like, can someone look at security cameras? Oh my God, there's someone in here. And there's an old man going, I just got kicked 
by a goat! <laughs> and they're like, no, no, don't be silly, we have an anti-goat policy. <laughs> an anti-kid policy, wait. Uh, but you are on the conveyor belt, and you can see there's all these paths leading to different areas of the shop, and some go into other rooms, some don't go into other rooms. Um, there's the way you came, but you're in the middle of a panic. What would you like to do? I'd like to go back the way I came. Okay, there is a huge, steep... Bit, which you came flying down on before, but now you're going to have to go up. That's fine. I can climb up you there. You can climb up there. 46 for me, please. I'm going to roll the chaos pool against you. Five. Success. One. Failure. Two. Failure. Three. Failure. Aww. One. Three. Five. Cancels out. So you're like... You're trying to, you're trying your best to get up, but then suddenly you just see the massive fuck-off box coming down. <laughs> thing. And you're like... So you've got a choice. You either get hit by the box or you jump off. Jump off. Jump off. Okay. So you jump off and you could either jump off. There's two aisles on either side of you. You could either jump off into the um, the baby and young kid aisle. Right? Uh, or you can jump off into... World Foods. There we go. Young kid's aisle or World Foods aisle? World Foods aisle. Just because I think I look... Like, I might be this mysterious Careful. foreign stranger. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm just saying, a mysterious foreign stranger, because my look is so unique, that perhaps uh, then... That, uh, put, uh, that kicks an, a defenceless old man. I mean, that's just what he said. There's a goat! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they think to look in the world through dial. Okay, so you jump off, and again, using your sort of goat skills, I won't make you roll for it, you manage to jump off onto all the little bits and pieces, and you land, and it is an incredibly strange aisle. There are, like, various different kinds of pickles in huge jars. There are massive bags of rice and everything. Actually, you probably land on a huge bag of rice to soften your fall. Well, it's one of those aisles that's incredibly long, and it doesn't look like there's many hiding places in it. And as you sort of try to dash towards the exit of the cell, you can hear noises as the security team of Kiddle starts looking for the mysterious stranger in a star <laughs> cape, wearing a bowler hat, <laughs> huge <laughs> moustache, <laughs> and bright blue <laughs> bow tie. <laughs> I thought this would be the easiest part of this fucking thing. <laughs> then there's nowhere to hide. I don't know. Is can there, I is climb there... on top of the aisle again? Uh, you can try. Because, it's, it's got to. Because the, the, nobody looks up. It seems like only small children have looked up <laughs> so far. But now because there's a bit of chaos happening, you s- s- surmise that maybe people will be checking uh, the conveyor belts. Not that this sort of incident I don't want to be before. on the conveyor belt. No, no, no. But they'll probably be checking up top. What you can do, perhaps, is... I need m- to make a mockery of a physical barrier. You could. You could try and climb some of the shelves and then pretend to be a product yes. of world food. <laughs> could do. Uh, what, what luck do I think I've got? I feel like I've got like a mysterious, perhaps, Eastern European vibe going on at the moment. Sure. Or maybe Italian. Um, but I don't know many Italians that wear bowler hats. Um... <laughs> I've got to be honest, I don't think the bowl of hat is your biggest problem <laughs> right now. And so, I'm going to pretend to be the brand mascot. Okay. Of? For Mr. Nichols Pickles. <laughs> Excellent. So, conveniently, Mr. B- what was it, Mr. Pickles? No. Mr. Nichols Pickles. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the famous brand in Kittle. <laughs> Mr. Nichols Pickles. <laughs> Funnily enough, right on the top shelf, there are, you know, it's like the big um, big oil drums of, you know, of oil of oil. One big one of pickles. And on top of it, there looks like a similar, <laughs> a similar mascot to you. To get Funny up, that. <laughs> to get up there, you will have to climb. Well. And obviously, it is a huge physical barrier. So. So, 66. 66. That's going against three in the chaos pool. Two. Failure. Six. Success. Three. Failure. Six. Success. Two. (laughs) Failure. Last one. One. Okay, two successes. Five. No. One. Six. No! (laughs) (laughs) You get to the top. You get to the top. And just as you lean against Mr. Nichols Pickles, you lean slightly too far, and suddenly 
it starts wobbling and then it starts rolling and suddenly you're in an Indiana Jones type sequence <laughs> <laughs> where this huge bottle, this huge, this huge <laughs> gallon of pickle juice is going <laughs> You're on top though. And you're Okay, good, because that was going to be my, my next move was to jump you're on, on top. top of it. But it is causing a lot of noise. So it's going to like That's not fair! You, as it sort of roll, starts rolling around, the whole shelf starts buckling and your bits are flying off, bits of <laughs> bits of rice, bits of other mysterious pickled items that you're not entirely sure where they've come from or who eats them. <laughs> and you hear people going, Oh my god! It's gonna flatter us all What do you like to do? Part of me's tempted to let it flatter them all. It also flattened you in the process. Though. Okay, no, I'm going to leap off. Yes. Onto the... The next aisle. <laughs> okay, the next aisle. It's the gluten-free aisle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you're going to move to the next... <coughs> I'm going to jump onto the the top of the next aisle. So the physical barrier. Yep, yep. so that's going to be technically not climbing, you're jumping. Okay. Can I climb? <laughs> well, I guess I have to jump. Yeah. And then climb the last little bit. All right, fine. So that's 66 then. Which you probably will need, because there's only there's four dice in the case. Four. Success. Six. Success. Three. Uh, failure. Three. Failure. Five. Success. One. All right, three successes. Here you go, four. Six. No. Four. No. Four. No. Two. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's, that's such a shame. No, I don't want to play. I love the idea. <laughs> you jump. But before you even land on the aisle, it's already crumbling because it's gluten-free. <laughs> There's no structure to it at all. And you just... It, it's even more chaotic than anything else. It is just... You survive, and somehow the bottle of fire whiskey is still in your mouth, but it is, it is getting very hard and slippery to hang on to. And you can hear the other... The Kiddle security team is slowly closing in. Shall I just make a dash for the exit? I think at this point... So you can make a dash for the exit. What you are aware of is that usually there are uh, machines that go round these shops that are almost like a Zambonis type thing, which clean up mess. And you can hear the sound of one coming through now. And it's quite a big machine. So you think uh, you could hide like either underneath it or in it until it gets past uh, the opportunity, should you wish to do it. Or you can make a dash for the door. Underneath it. Underneath it. All right. So you manage to <laughs> squeeze underneath it. Again, your cape flopping out a bit, and you sneak out towards the exit. Yay! All right, you have everything you need for the party. As you go, as you sort of leap out, it looks like Kittle is on fire. <laughs> People are crying. There's, a, there's an old man being taken away in a in an ambulance. Say, but there's a goat in there. It kicks me. I'll, I'll be suing Kittle for their anti kid policy. Blah blah blah. And um, you look round to the other to the other shop, uh, the the costume shop. That's also on fire. You don't know how that happened. <laughs> it wasn't me. No, and the old lady's... Like, the old I'm la- pretty sure it was a fire hazard anyway. <laughs> the old lady... Has, there's like... Uh, <laughs> like firemen are pulling out this uh, the, the rack and she's just stuck in between. <laughs> she's so tight and she's like... Ah, ah, there was someone in the shop! <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but you are fine for now. You spent some time gaining your thoughts, reflecting on the day's events. Getting and- rid of some chaos, die. Yeah, to be fair, I'd say it's gone down to one because there's been some time. Time has passed. Yeah, not weeks though. A couple of hours. Yeah. You got one chaos dice. I've been laying low. Sort of. You <laughs> you sort of been hiding in some hiding in some bushes, maybe eating a little bit of the the fauna and watching the dinner. And what you've seen in the last couple of hours is so the old man got taken off in the ambulance. Good. Um, the old lady from the costume shop got taken off in another ambulance. That was an unfortunate bystander. It was. Um, and you start to see there's like community um, community boards uh, are up, and there seems to be uh, wanted. And there's a really awful like uh, artist impression of it looks like a very s- short, small person in a bowler hat, a star studded cape, a big moustache, glasses. Is it just the one poster? Oh, there's a, quite a couple, but they're quite like it's clearly been rushed. And they, all it says on it, it says, "Oh, we'd like to speak to this person of interest." So you're like, "I think I got away with it. It's not too bad." Anyway, could I eat one of the posters? Are you gonna go up to a notice board? No, <laughs> no. I mean, no. I'm, I'm asking. No. Okay. I could climb my way up to a notice board. You can, but you're also in some. I'm saying right now, you're in some bushes, so you've got plenty to eat. 
But of course, you don't want to fill yourself up too much because there's stuff at the party, or you hope there's stuff at the party, and people are bringing their own food. You did see that. Yeah. So, as the night draws on, you can see where the party's being held. You didn't know where the party was going to be, but now that you've got this perfect position, you can see that it's going to be at the town hall. And there are people putting up glorious little uh, uh, bouquets of, uh, of flowers, and there's like a, something going in, it looks like a fountain, and yeah, oh, it's a very prestigious event. And over the top of the door, it says, Rock Town's Founders Day, on this big banner above the door. But you're just like, eh, whatever. I can't read. No. <laughs> you, you can read. You, I mean, you saw the person of interest poster <laughs> and you put two and two together. So you, you can definitely read a little bit. You just maybe can't speak properly. I was. I spoke rather well. He just didn't you, believe me. No, you think the reason he probably did is probably because he thought you were human because you were wearing a fancy hat and a pair of glasses and a fake moustache. <laughs> I could have a speech impediment. He listened to you and then you failed on that sort of um, bluff check. <laughs> anyway, point is, as the sort of uh, night progresses, of course, you know you don't want to be uh, fashionably early to a party. It's always no, no, fashionably no. early. No, no, no. So you wait and as the, sort of the lights go on and it goes into sort of the nice dusk area, suddenly there is like a whole fleet of these mechanised wagons that sort of pull up. And then there's lots of uh, lights going off. It looks like oh, people with these weird boxes and they're sort of taking pictures, you think? I don't, I don't know. And then people coming out and they're like, over here, over here. Oh, what are you wearing? Who are you wearing? And there's you know people going in and you don't recognise any of them. They seem to be very, very tall, willowy ladies and there's sort of shorter, fatter men and some, you know, all of them incredibly beautiful. And thankfully, all of them wearing sort of similar things to what you're wearing Starry now. Starry capes. No story capes. So you think you, you will stand out from that. But they all look very super smart. So it was probably a good idea that you got the stuff that you did and didn't go for anything else. <laughs> and then you spot, out of the corner of your eye, these people have what looks like um, lanyards. And on it, they say, like, press on it. And then one of them does catch your eye. It says Tatler. It says Tatler on it. And it looks to be like a very young man, very prim and proper, like uh, blonde, swept back hair, like sort of uh, gelled back and he's sort of writing in his little notebook, and then suddenly he spots someone from inside, and he goes in, into the double doors. And there are people still arriving and stuff, um, but it is a huge, huge town hall. And you can spot the odd one or two uh, bodyguards and security. What would you like to do? The back way in. Uh, you suspect so, but again, this time, because of the big party... You don't know if you can sneak around. There might be someone else there. You can try to. Could I wait for a little while to make sure there are less people? Or maybe I want to go in with more people. More people to spot me, but easier to get lost in a crowd. So you maybe take another few minutes. And what you see is a pattern that repeats itself. So a wagon comes, doors open. There's lots of flashing of bulbs or whatever. Person gets out. It chats to the crowd. Go into the building. Wagon leaves. Wagon comes up, doors open, there's, you know, and same over and over again. There doesn't seem to be any slowing of, of wagons, so there seems to be plenty. I guess, like, so, sneak up behind a wagon, mm -hmm. and then obviously they get out, and then kind of, like, when the all the press are, like, talking to the people that got out of the wagon, mm -hmm. to sneak in. Sneak in? Yeah. So are you going to open... The wagon door and then follow them out? Or are you going to try and follow them? Oh, I don't know. I Something don't... about a physical barrier needs to be in here. The wagon is a physical barrier. You could jump over the top of it. Well, no, because I feel like that's very chaotic. Oh, do you think <laughs> so? <laughs> what I'm saying is that what you could do is that when the door opens on one side, you could open it on the other and then follow... Yeah. The and that would be technically sneaking. Yes, I could but sneak. You would, but you would have to roll for it, because obviously it's like, ah, I was here all along! <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do that. So, so what, were, what are we justifying for this? You are... You're not making a mockery of physical barriers. Well, you're not... Sure why. That's if you jump over the car, no, which you said you're not doing. Like... You're sneaking, so that would reduce the chaos pull, because you are trying to do is pull off something clever. I'd say that would reduce the pull, but might be just a 2d6 on this one. Six. Success. Four. Success. And because you're sneaking. Oh, wow. So that's two successes. Excellent. Fucking seamless. <laughs> <laughs> we 
which is completely the opposite of what happened in the supermarket. Absolutely. I think you time it just right. And I think the feeling of like, this is my moment, I've got this. And you've been psyching yourself up all of it and you see the perfect end. This beautiful, long, mechanised wagon comes and you... And you put it... And out of the other side of the door is an incredibly fat woman. But beautifully so. Like, she is covered in gold and jewellery and stuff like that. And as she sort of like takes her time... golden whale. She is all-encompassing. And as she gets up, you hear, Maradona, Maradona, and people start you know, taking pictures of her and you just sort of slip in behind and you're like, aha! It's a very odd sight to see this huge woman and a small, who knows what, next to them. But people don't question <laughs> it. it. It seamlessly works. And you see her, she goes, ah, no, I cannot speak tonight. I must go in. It is the Rock Town's Founders Day. Let us let us go. And he goes, ah, clearly forgotten who the, f- you know, if she brought anything. Like, ah, let us go. And my plus one is here. Let us go in. Yes, that gets me in. Pardon, little one, what did you say? What a lovely evening we're having. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't quite, I, I'm very deaf, but uh, why did, what did you say your name was? I'm so sorry, I didn't speak in the car. Marlon Brando. 2D6. That's a joke, that's a joke. My name's Marvin Starstruck. Hmm. I like, I like. Maybe stick to Marv, though. Yes. Excellent. Well, and she sort of holds out her hand as if to be escorted in. <laughs> like, like her arm. But you are fucking tiny compared to this lady. Well, I'm going to have to escort her in. Yep. Can I get up on my back? Your back Leg. hind legs, yeah. yeah. And hold her. <laughs> I should have worn gloves. <laughs> you sort of do that. You can hook in. Yeah, I get hook you in. You hook in. Cool. And with the coat, the, the cape as well, it sort of covers... The rest of you. So you look very grandoso. <laughs> and very Phantom of the Opera. Exactly. And um, <laughs> bow the hat. And <laughs> bow tie. And the march. Ah! Excellent. And so you make your way up and you enter an extravagant ballroom. It is, it is white. It is gold. It is everything you imagined the party to be at. And you've never been to the town hall. You've never been to Rock Town before. Like, why would you? But you're like, this, this is my moment. I... You feel at home. And it's quite full now. You waited to the right time. You were fashionably late. And as you enter, you can see, looking out of this grand sort of ballroom, there's some beautiful uh, gilded steps that go down. And you're about to go into it, and the lady goes, No, 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 wait. We must be announced. <laughs> <laughs> she whispers something to this, like, uh, an older gentleman. And he goes, Please be uh, and Marv. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Lady Maradona and... Marv. <laughs> and he always goes around politely, sort of... Cats and sort of clink, clinking of glasses. And slowly but surely, you make your way down. If anything, you don't dictate the pace. Maradona dictates the pace. So as you slowly go down. And as you do, you're sort of using uh, the moment to cast your eyes over it. And there are people here, people you've never seen before, but you recognise some people as like celebrities. Or, oh, that was like... That can't be Marlon Brando. He's dead. You know, and it's various <laughs> people you recognise from from bits of the bits of the uh, magazines yeah, just, you've been reading. I just realised that Marlon Brando is dead, yeah. and that was a silly thing to say. It was, but I let it go. <laughs> it was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. Roll a two d six to see if you can spot the person from Tatler. Two. No, I can't. <laughs> uh, it's a two d six. So oh. three. No, I can't. No. <laughs> you are just like I've made it. Oh my god! So you are overwhelmed and you can't see. So you make it down, and instantly the Maradona is surrounded by people, and people waiting on her, people go, oh, Maradona, your last concert was simply to die for it. Ah, yes, I know, I am great. Thank you, thank you. And you're sort of, not waylaid, but you can't, can't get your hoof out of the tight, the tightness of her, of her shawl, and so it's very hard to get her. You just nod and smile, and people don't t- send, tend to notice you. I think they're more focused on the grandioso of the Maradona. And you notice out of the corner of your eye a huge pile of gifts. And luckily you still have... I, I'd say you've got the Maradona's arm in, in one sort of hoof and your the fire bottle whiskey in your other. And you can see the big pile of presents. There is gift wrap bags. There are um, Chanel bags. There's all sorts of things. The gifts are next to a buffet. 
style thing. And you see people going around with um, trays with little um, accoutrements on, uh, little uh, wafer thin uh, salad things and um, little uh, sweet meats and stuff. And people are helping themselves, and other people are helping themselves to glasses of wine. And then, out of the corner of the right, you see a beautiful harpsichord. And someone is just gently and slowly sort of tinkling. At it. And next to that is a big stage with a microphone on it. And you suspect there's a lot of talk around you and you sort of listen to into the conversations and you hear that there's going to be a huge speech today to celebrate Founders Day of Rocktown. What would you like to do? Climb up to a high place okay. and look for the Tatler guy. Okay, so like I said, there's the bunch of presents that you can make your way to the top of. Well, I guess, um, yes. So, and, and or the, the same... top of the stairs, you could try. Well, let's go on the top of the presents. Um, I'm going to put... <laughs> cool. <Sorry. laughs> no, 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 that's chaotic. No, I, what would you do? What would you do? So I'm, I know, I'm... I'm just laughing because <laughs> that's so stupid. But I want, to, I want you to do what you feel okay, you do. Okay, I'm going to put this, we'll put my present down. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to climb to the top. Okay. Easily enough, you manage to slip quite quickly away from the uh, Maradona. She seems to be uh, wrapped up in her own little world, you know, talking about her own concert stuff. And it becomes clear as well, when you're listening in on the conversations before you slip away, she's been invited here to sing tonight. Oh, mm, great. Anyway, you slip away and you put down, gently put down the fire bowl okay. whiskey. Which I must have been carrying in my mouth this entire time. Well, no, I'd say you, you when you stood up... You probably cl- had it in one hoof. Clenched it. And then it. <laughs> when you went down back on all fours, you sort of put it in your mouth. You, know, you put it down gently and you look around and actually no one else has thought to bring a bottle of a fireball whiskey. So you're like... Sort of Top notch. Top notch. notch. You would like to climb the giant pile of presents. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a 4d6 for me, please? Two. One. Fail. Two. Fail. Four. Okay, one success. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Man, these things keep happening to you, don't they? <laughs> you make it to the top, and as you look, you do spot the Tatler journalist. They seem to be talking to a group of people next to the harpsichord. You think, perfect. And then your hoof goes through one of the presents, and you're like, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> and another hoof goes, and slowly but surely, this whole pile starts teetering. And no one's noticed anything yet. But you know, if you stay on here any longer, this whole thing will come I'm down. I'm going to very carefully climb down. Okay. Is that... <laughs> I, I will leave now. <laughs> I casually make my way towards the hump's cord. Okay. On two legs. Okay. You're climbing down. I am climbing down. Going towards the Tatler journalist. You're and I am in... making a mockery of a physical <laughs> barrier, so... <laughs> Is that 66 then? I think you read it. Yes. And it's going to be quite hard because you've punctured two presents with your feet. So I'm Five. To... One success. Two. Failure. Two. Failure. Six. Success. Four. Success. Five. Success. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm going to add one dice to the chaos pool. But you, but you succeeded. You didn't roll anything against it because there wasn't anything there. But, but, I'll explain. But, you quickly make your way down the pile of presents. And you're like, ah, done. You stand up. You walk with purpose <laughs> to- <laughs> towards the harpsichord player. Unfortunately, uh, because your foot did go through one of the presents, you have it still on your foot and you can't shake it off. So you slide a little bit, but you'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's almost as if you've got toilet paper stuck to your bottom. You should be like, no, 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 everything's fine. You start walking, and thankfully, by the time you get over to the cups of the player, the presents have stopped shaking. And you're like, whew, done. So the harpsichord player is playing a very beautiful melody. It's a very sort of very harpsichord simple... old school. Oh, it is, yeah. Rock Town. What would a name like that? Even though they've got mechanized white wagons. Who knows? Um, <laughs> you look casually, maybe you, you lean on the harpsichord. Uh, yeah. like, mm. And you're trying to, are you trying to listen in to what the Tatler person is saying? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Tatler is interviewing and clearly he's trying to get a big scoop. And actually, when you listen in closely, he seems to be like, yes, so um, so you, this Founders Day thing, I, I, I've heard it's a massive cover-up or something. Can you tell me any more? And the party goes, he interviews, oh, I'm so sorry, I, I don't know. And they avoid his questioning. So he's looking a bit, not downtrodden, but a bit perplexed. And he's sort of like looking back at the um, thing. 
But you're just there, casually looking um, smarmy. But currently, your tattler friend is uh, unoccupied. Well, I've got nothing to give him. You don't have to give him anything. Um, your aim uh, is to get interviewed by him. Okay, right? I'm going to just go and stand next to him and clear my throat. <laughs> uh, oh, um, I- I'm so, so terribly sorry. Um, Montague Smythe. Pl- lovely to meet you. And she holds out a hand. Marv. <laughs> <laughs> you shake with your... Oh, charm, charmed. Um, tell me, how did you hear of this uh, soiree? I always attend the Founders' Day ball. <laughs> Two D six, Alex. <laughs> what was that? Four success. Four success. Oh, I was under the impression this was the first one, but I, I must be completely wrong about that. Well, oh. it's been slightly different in the past. Oh, I see. I, I, I see. Terribly. Um, I'm looking for to interview someone about the history of this ball and what normally goes on. Uh, will you be willing to be interviewed? Totally. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so tell me. Um, I've heard. That Rock Town has been in some financial crises recently, and there's been a big sort of a cover-up and embezzlement schemes. Um, do you have any businesses that operate here? Not directly here, but further up the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what what kind of what kind of business are you in? I'm a goat herder. Oh, a charming, charming. Uh, is there a lot of money in uh, in goat herding? Well, there is round here because oh. there's quite a lot of goats. Really. Oh, I do you have a monopoly on it? And he starts getting his, uh, his pencil out and he's like, sharpens it, he licks it. Ugh, horrible. And then starts writing notes in it. Well, I would say that, you know, uh, I'm definitely one of the most knowledgeable people here about goats. Fantastic! Oh, well, um, maybe maybe if we get away from the goats just a little bit, just because um, we, um, our readers aren't so fussed about goats, but um, more about this embezzlement scheme. And just as he's about to start asking more questions... Suddenly, the doors at the the top of the banquet hall open and police start rushing in going, this is a sting operation, we're here for the mayor, everyone stay where you are, don't move. And you're like, oh shit. I'm going to start jumping over people. (laughs) Where are you going? Is there an exit? Where's my nearest exit? Um, So the double doors are currently surrounded by lots of police. There are really high, like, windows, stained glass windows. It doesn't look like they open. There's the harpsichord player. There's the, um... There may be, like, toilets and stuff like that, but they seem to be blocked full of people who are sort of panicking. Is right now, now the right time to party hard? Well, what would you like to do? I am going to party hard and party oh. my way out of... A... <laughs> By doing what? What would you like to do? I'm going to leap onto the harpsichord yep. and then going to leap from person to person. Climbing on top of them. Which is both climbing... And making a mockery of physical barriers. Excellent. Okay. So, that's 46, plus any dice in my current pool, which technically now, because the police have come in, is two. Yeah. So you get 66 in total to roll. So, so, hang on. I thought I would have 66 because I'm climbing and making a mockery. You're right, I've been doing this wrong. So it's it's actually 66 plus my two. So I've got 8d6. 8d6, yeah. Okay. Six. One. Three. There you go. Two. Failure. Yeah. Six. Success. Two success. Five. Success. Three more dice. One. Failure. Yeah. One. Failure. Yeah. Six. Four successes. You jump from the harpsichord player and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> horrible bum note as like... Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> The way you jump on from person to person, it's almost as if you're hidden at certain points. So like someone's beautiful uh, updo is in the perfect shape of a goat. Um, <laughs> who wears a backpack to a party? You don't know, but you've, you fit a in there. A headdress. A headdress. A headdress. There we go. No, I was thinking backpack. You're like, whatever. you manage to make it all the way to the top of the stairs, pass all the police, and you start to turn around and you see, um, you see the Maradona. Going, what is the meaning of this? Ah, stop. And she starts getting uh, like, three policemen on top of her trying to like arrest her for her own part in the scheme. Uh, you see the harpsichord player playing along some jaunty tune like you see presents going flying you see uh, more fires starting you don't know how this <laughs> what the fuck's going on and you sort of make it out of it and you turn back and you see the tattler person who has seen all of this and seen you and gone oh, amazing and I'm going started... to wink 
at him. Uh huh. And then swish my cape and leave. And leave and straight back up to the mountain. Yeah. And for weeks and months to come, you see a serialized series of short stories about the mysterious starry caped do gooder who somehow uncovered the embezzlement fraud. Not necessarily true, but you can tell that the Tatler person has sort of embellished it in some way. But you are now famous amongst all your fellow goats and the herders. And you know how to party hard at these farways. Farways? Sorays. No, I don't know. <laughs> Parties. Party hard at these parties. Party hard at these hootenannies. And you know all about Kittle. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is doing name for a shop? Alright, and, and that's it. Good job. <laughs> Woo! So, not only did Marv succeed in making it into the society pages, but uncovered an embezzlement scheme. You go to be kidding me. Huh? Uh, yeah, that was pretty, pretty terrible. Um, roll credits. The What Am I Rolling podcast was created, recorded, and edited by me, Fiona Howitt. This episode's player was Alex Howitt. This episode's RPG was Goat Crashers, a one-page role-playing game created by game designer Grant Howitt. Goat Crashers is available as a pay-what-you-want-for product on the Rowan, Rook and Descartes website. That's Rowan, Rook and Descartes.com. You can find out more information about Grant's other projects and one-shots on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash GS Howitt. The theme music was 8-Bit March by Twin Musicon of twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamirollingpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at wair underscore podcast for latest news on upcoming episodes. And remember, adventurers need not apply.